the overall album came about uh, through James Williams. And uh, as you know, James was like a mentor for me as well as a brother and a, a best friend and uh, my manager. He, you know, I always felt like, you know, he was wearing a lot of hats and, and uh, but he was always thinking about me. And so, uh, you know, he told me, you know, Don, you gotta do a record. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't feel like I was ready, but but as James used to always tell me, well, you gonna always feel you're not ready. So uh, l luckily, I went ahead and did it. And one of the things I'm glad I took James' advice about a lot of things that that usually was the right decision. But James convinced me instead of doing standards and so on to do some of my, you know I should do my originals. So you know I think. Maybe other than Speak Low and and if you can see me now, I think most of the other songs are originals. And uh, and then James suggested a lot of the personnel. Uh, so the, uh, on the recording, I used uh, Donald Harrison and uh, Bill Mobley. And, uh, you know, Bill and I go back so far, so that was a natural choice. But but I was really glad James suggested me use Bob Hurst and Tane, because even though I love their playing and stuff, you know, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. So I, went, I probably was thinking along the lines of people that I had worked with a lot. But And, and then Steve Nelson I had just met maybe a year before. I was teaching at Berkeley, and James uh, was doing a gig in Boston. And, it was, and he was using Steve Nelson on it. And I remember hearing Steve play, I think they played If I Should Lose You that day. And uh, after hearing Steve solo on that, I was just thinking, man, I got to play with that cat. So, you know, like I say, first opportunity that came along, you know, I, I got Steve to play on the date. But, but uh, you know, everybody plays a butt off on the record. But but I feel like Tane and, and Bob really uh, interpreted the music the way I was hearing it in my head. But, you know, like I said, they brought that thing to it. And uh, it just it just makes the record for me. And so, uh, yeah, uh, if that answers your question. And uh, so are, are there any favorite compositions of yours from the record? And if so, what were the inspirations behind those particular compositions? As I mentioned about Early Bird, that had to do with you know, being a parent, at the time I think I just had three kids, but, uh, you know, three knucklehead sons, that was more than enough to deal with at the time. You know, even then I was felt like, you know, I, I was experiencing a lot of different uh, things dealing with race that uh, you just, I, I find myself, even today, uh, I write down titles uh, on a sheet of paper, I got probably two sheets of paper with a lot of titles on it. And that was one of the titles I had on there. So, uh, and then the tune Bad, Bad Case of the Booze, that was written for Art Blakey. You know, I, I had worked with Art, and uh, I, actually that was the second song I wrote for Art. The tune New York was dedicated to Art Blakey. And Bad Case of the Booze, if you notice the spelling, it's B-U apostrophe S. And that's for Booze, Muslim name. Uh, Boo Hainer, and we, we call him Boo. But yeah, it's dedicated to him, and uh, the tune uh, Quiet Fire is dedicated to the great pianist uh, Horace Pollard. And that came, song was inspired at, at her at Horace on Yields for Record. I mean, here on uh, Yields on Record. All those great solos, and you know, just Comping, everything was just so incredible, you know, rhythmically, melodically. And uh, so I, it was the first time I was with Art Blakey in 80, 81, and we went to Europe, and I think we were in Switzerland or someplace like that, maybe Copenhagen, I think, where Har Har Horace was living. And uh, so at the end of our gig, Art said, you want to go hear Horace? And I said, yeah, you know, and so, uh, you know, we went to hear, hear him, and the first thing I noticed, uh, I never knew he had, you know, well, one of his sands was deformed. And so, 
I don't know if you can see this, but but uh, his fingers, these three fingers, they pretty much kind of stayed up in the air like this. And uh, so he, he can use these fingers when he play. On the right hand, all he can use is the thumb and the little finger. And to see him maneuver all that and play, you know, solo piano, you, you, you never know he's playing with, you know, what's uh, seven fingers. And, uh, but it just blew me away. And then after, you know, meeting him, you know, he was one, he had one of those smiles like Billy Higgins that just kind of light up a room and, and you can feel his heart as soon as uh, you start talking to him. And so, uh, uh, it, was, it was, you know, like I said, I heard him and I thought, he thought to myself, man, I got to write something for this guy. And so, you know, I can't remember when I wrote it, but, but uh, obviously it was before the date. And, uh, and it was kind of the same effect that the composition Jay McShann. I heard him one night in the old city here in Knoxville. And uh, after hearing him play, you know, I heard him on record, but hearing him play, I was just so excited. I got to meet him and take a picture with him. And, and I came home that night and started playing the piano and, and wrote the tune, Jay McShann. And uh, so, you know, it was uh, another composition inspired by another pianist. The Tad Dameron tune, uh, if you can see me now, I think I can, maybe I might have heard Russ Montgomery or somebody play it first, but it's one of those songs you hear and you think about, I don't know, I think it may, may have, when I think about it, it may have been Sir Vaughn, I heard singing it, but, and, uh, but you hear it and you think, man, I got to play, some, I got to have some of that, I got to play, you know, play that, learn it. And so, you know, it's, I, I did it solo piano, as you know, in the record, but, uh, and the tune basically simple. It's just a rhythm change tune with a different bridge. The bridge altered a little bit. For, I can't remember if I wrote that for Reggie Workman, the bassist. But it was kind of interesting because the, the bass plays a melody. And even for a horn player, that melody can be kind of tricky. And if Bob makes it sound simple and effortless on the uh, recording. The intervals he's you know he's playing and and uh, and then you know he plays a killer solo and he uh, the lines he's walking is like you know so hip and happening that you know sometimes I can be distracted from, from you know just listening to him but yeah so that was that was that was uh, basically simple uh, probably yes about the record and you know some of my favorite tunes uh, probably. I like all the tunes, but my three favorite ones is The Early Bird Gets the Short and the Stick, and then Playground for the Birds, and the tune I wrote for my wife, your mother, uh, Dorothy. And, uh, but you know, uh, so the Playground for the Birds, every time I hear that song, I can, I can remember the moment. You know, it, it just transported me right back to that moment in time. But I wrote that when we were living in Boston. And it was inspired. It was inspired by uh, one day I, I took you all to the park, and uh, you know you all were being kids, and and I remember just seeing birds coming in and uh, get some food, or walk around a minute, then take off. So I feel like I, I can hear that in the the, the song itself, but uh, but it was just like a really was one of those days uh, life felt great and and I just felt really blessed to be a, a father, a husband, but uh, yeah that song it, it always just takes me back to that part and uh, you know watching you all play and just have the greatest feeling and so uh, it comes across in the music I think. I'm trying to think what's the other song on that? Yeah I think uh, maybe it's uh, yeah Dorothy. <clears throat> I think it's the song after that. And, uh, but yeah, it's one of my favorite tunes because it's about your mother. Uh, and I think it's one of maybe six songs I've composed for her. But that, that one uh, is just kind of like I say, even when I hear it, you know, I can still feel where I was at at that point in my life. And knowing, you know, she was with me, at, obviously, at all those different points. but. It's just a, you know, it's a special feeling for me, 
Uh, I mean, and one of the things I remember about that song after we finished playing it, Bob Hurst said, man, uh, Dorothy must be a really beautiful woman, man, because that's a beautiful song. And that just kind of, we laughed about it, but at the same time, it kind of really touched me. Another funny thing, probably, we were, uh, when we were playing uh, Early Bird Gets a Shorty in the Stick. And uh, I think we might have been listening to a playback, and Tane, he's, he's got such a sense of humor, and, uh, and he's really fast, you know, with, with uh, you know, comebacks, you know, lines he can come back with if you say something. But so I'm, we listened to the record. And Tane starts saying, don't push me cause I'm close to the edge, right? And he just said, don't push me cause I'm close to And we all just died laughing because, uh, you know, I hadn't thought about how it just lands up rhythm <laughs> right with the song. But, uh, and then the, the uh, standard, Speak low, you know, I tried to put a little spin, my spin on a little different arrangement. and But the whole object was to get something up-tempo. We didn't have anything up-tempo on the record. And so, you know, it uh, starts out swinging, and then it goes into this funk groove. And then uh, then it goes to double-time swing doing solos. And, but, uh, you know, the, the album was, it was my first. And, you know, it, it still uh, takes me to a really great place. I, I can really hear that uh, when I listen to the record that I was playing a lot. I was still studying the music a lot. You, you know, that, I, it was my second time playing with Art Blakey, I think 1986 or something. And, uh, and I was teaching at Berkeley. But, uh, oh yeah, so I, I was uh, just saying I was playing a lot. Uh, being in Boston, teaching at Berkeley, uh, I, I, I was, had access to New York City. So, you know, I rejoined Art Blakey. So that was a lot of playing. And then uh, I played some gigs with uh, Bobby Hutchison. Did some, a little small tour with Eddie Lockjaw Davis and Johnny Griffin together with me and Kenny Washington and Curtis Lundy. And, uh, but just living in Boston, it was just so many opportunities to play. And uh, not to mention, you know, some of the obvious guys I was playing with, Bill, Bill Pierce, Bill Mobley, John Lockwood, Ron Marty. And uh, so, you know, uh, so when I hear that, I can really hear that I was playing a lot of kind of music, you know, playing a lot, but, but listening to a lot of different music. So, uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's kind of the, the gist of what that record's about.